Dumb Husky and His White Cat She's Un. Chapter 88 This venerable one meets another reborn person. Moran raised his head and looked toward the source of the sound. A man in a black with gold patterned cloak appeared at the end of the corridor. He was tall and stood upright with his whole body covered with black cloth. Even his face was covered with a black veil, only revealing a pair of eyes that couldn't be seen clearly in the dark. In that person's hand, there was a sword. The slender blade was completely black and unmistakably sharp. Bullet and gooey. Who? Who I am is not important. That person said coldly. His voice was very strange, as if deliberately distorted. You only need to know that I knew who you are. Moran was shocked, but he still calmed down and collect himself. I'm just a disciple of the She's Hung Peak. Is it that interesting for you to know what I do? A disciple of the She's Hung Peak. Oh, yes, but have you forgotten that you are also Ta Sien Jun, the emperor of the human realm, the reviled person who killed his own master to prove his way, a dead soul who escaped from the Yellow Spring. With every word he said, Moran's blood became colder. He felt like he had fallen into an ice cave. Ta Sien Jun, the one who slaughtered the 72 cities of Rufeng sect. Emperor of the human realm. The one who married the most beautiful woman in the cultivation world, killed his own master and his own family, and climbed to the top and became the first cultivator to become emperor of the human realm. That person said coldly, You are Mo Wiyu. Mo Wiyu who is heinous beyond redemption. The one who should not be reincarnated even after 10,000 deaths. Mo Wiyu, who deserves to be cut into pieces, gouged out of his heart and eyes and be left for dead on the summit of Shi's Hung Peak. Who are you? Mo Ran's eyes went red and the childish look on his face was gone. What was left was only the fierceness of a demon. He confronted the person at the end of the corridor. He intended to rip that other person's throat to lock up all the names in that person's throat that he didn't want to hear anymore. The man raised his black veiled hand and the long walkway was instantly filled with ice crystals, separating the space between them. You can't summon this sword now, can you? That person walked slowly and stopped about ten steps in front of him. Emperor of the human realm. Maybe it's better to call you Mo Ran now? It's ridiculous. Have you ever taken a good look at yourself? My heart is no longer as cold and hard as steel. Following Bai Chu Wanning's side, I'm actually treating him better. Ah yes, you had been reborn after all. However where is the person you said you would protect in the previous life? Mo Ran's expression changed rapidly. Shimei. What did you do to Shimei? That person did not answer. He only sneered, do you know why you can't summon Bulat and Gui back? His fingertip slowly stroked the thick blade. It's because your soul is about to change and your hatred is about to dissipate. Before you die, you regretted that life of yours, for not being able to protect your Shikshan Ming Jing. You once vowed that if there was an afterlife, you would definitely not let him down. That pair of stern and appalled eyes suddenly looked up. Mo Ran, did you do it? I. The barrier against the ghost realm is about to be broken. What happened in the past will repeat itself. Do you still want to watch him die and beg Chu Wanning to be merciful to him? You're squandering the chance rebirth has given you on this life. You don't deserve to touch Bullet and Gui again. I don't need you to tell me that. Mo Ran said angrily, the matter between me and Shimei is not for others to interfere. Since you know that I'm a reborn person, who are you? The fake Gushin? Or an old ghost who came back from the dead like me? Hat. That person chuckled. A resurrected ghost who came back from the dead. Yes, I'm a resurrected ghost who came back from the dead. Do you think that you're the only one who's been blessed by the heavens to be reborn again? Who is it? Blurred faces flashed through Moran's mind like crazy. The people who died in his former lifetime. Shui Zhen Yang, Madame Wang, Chu Wanning, Song Kaiyutong, Ye Wangzi. 
or the people who forced their way up to Wushan Palace in his previous life to bury him. Shwemang, Mei Hangsu, and the leaders of the Ten Great Sects. Who is it? Who is it? Who knew his secret? Who grasped his weak point? Who was it that stepped through the Yellow Springs to chase after him? Who was it that wanted to force him into a dead end? Who is it? In mere moments, the figure in front of him moved. That man's clothes fluttered as he moved in front of him. Moran was shocked to see how strong this man was even after his rebirth. The blade of Bulat and Gui's was already against his chest and the slightest pressure could have pierced the flesh and damaged his heart. Mo Weiyu, I thought you were an infatuated person. But maybe it's because your Shikshan Mingjing is unlucky. Even after you've been reborn, you still don't prioritize him. Mo Ran gritted his teeth. Nonsense. I'm spouting nonsense. That person laughed coldly. He put a hand on Mo Ran's throat and slowly slid it down to his chest. How much space do you leave for him in your heart? That little bit of nostalgia you have, I'm afraid it's already been worn away. Is there anything left? Mo Ran angrily said, Who is in my heart? Do you think I don't know better than you? You talk too much. Why don't you take off your veil and show me your face? You want to see me? There's no rush. The man's voice was like smoke, and his gaze was evanescent, seemingly with some sneer that didn't take people seriously. When you're about to die in this life, I'll show you. You're the one who's about to die. You. Before he finished speaking, he suddenly felt a bone-piercing cold under his feet. Mo Ran looked down. That person's ice spikes had climbed up his body at some point. Ice spell, ice spikes. Water essence. Who was it? In his previous life, who could cast this kind of spell? He had made too many enemies. He was anxious to remember that his mind turned into a mess. Shui Meng, fire essence. Chu Wanning, metal essence and wood essence. Ye Wangzi, earth essence. Shui Zhen Yong, Earth Essence. Who was it? No matter how he thought about it, he couldn't remember who had such a strong power to control ice. You're right. I'm also going to die. However, Mo Weiyu, that won't be for a very, very long time in the future. The ice spell quickly froze his entire body. This person's strength was too terrifying. Mo Ran released a bit of spirit energy to resist the ice. He felt a brutal and tremendous force lashing out at him. The person in front of him was not below Chu Wanning in terms of strength. Water Essence Who? In a flash, a blurry face seemed to flash past. But before he could think clearly, his throat was grabbed by that person. The fingertips covered by black gauze rubbed his throat. That person's eyes were gloomy and dark. There's no need for your majesty to worry about my lifespan. He said slowly, it is better to let me, first of all, call back some of the love you were born with, lest you do not do the right thing and spoil my great plan. Ugh. Bulat and Gui wailed as it cut through its former master's flesh. The wound isn't deep. I'll just take some of your blood and make a seal. That person really did just smear some blood on his wound. Then, he touched the space between his eyebrows and muttered. Mo Ran only felt a sharp pain in his head. He cursed, fuck, you, motherfucker. Did I chop you up in your previous life? Or did I fucking kill 18 generations of your ancestors? Motherfucker, what are you trying to do? SHH, don't move. It's just a good heart curse. I don't fucking care if it's a good heart curse or a bad heart curse. Can you not disgust me? Get lost. Mo Ran, ah that person slowly drew a talisman between his eyebrows and sighed softly, how can you bear to ask me to get lost? He paused and muttered again, the heart is not like water, the will cannot be stopped, the door of the heart, is wide open. His chest suddenly twisted in pain. You. The ice spell was suddenly removed. 
Moran staggered and slowly knelt on the ground with a pale face. You still haven't thanked me. That black-clothed person lowered his eyes with an indifferent expression. He looked at him for a while and said lightly, I've expanded all the emotions in your heart. What you love and hate will be clearer. In this way, you'll be able to see your own heart clearly, right? If you still don't do your best to protect Chi Mei and make him your priority, then you, are really useless and nothing more than an expendable pawn. So, this good heart curse made the love and hate in the heart stronger and clearer? Why did this person spend so much effort to protect Chi Mei's life? Water Essence These were the last few stray thoughts that flashed through his mind before he lost consciousness. With a thud sound, Moran fell to the ground as he closed his eyes. That black-clothed person coldly looked at him for a while, then slowly leaned over. He first checked his pulse. After a moment of silence, he raised his hand and condensed a ball of blue light in his palm. Forget all. The black-clothed person softly spat out these two words. The blue light became brighter. Moran's tightly knitted eyebrow slowly relaxed. When he woke up, he would only remember that he went out and summoned Bulat and Gui but Bulat and Gui did not come. He would not remember anything else. He would not know that there was another person in this world who was reborn. Although the good heart curse's effect could only last for a few days, it could very well point out the way to the heart of a confused person. Expanding your emotions, I'm afraid that when you wake up, you'll find that you like Shi Mingjing more and more. You like him so much that you want to dig out your heart and give it to him. The black-clothed person coldly said. See you later, Toss Yanjun. After a night of turmoil, things settle down and Mo Ran opens his eyes early the next morning to find himself still lying next to Chu Wanning's bed. The window in the guest room seemed to have been blown open in the middle of the night. With the morning breeze, it gently opened and closed, making a creaking sound as it hit the wood. Moran did not look at the bed, but he knew that Chu Wanning should not have woken up yet. Outside the window of Banmiao Pavilion, there was a drab blue sky. The rising sun had not yet broken through the clouds. Early mornings were often pale and lacking in color. The sunlight did not give it much warmth. There were not many people who woke up this early. Even the sun seems too lazy to dress up and warm up her haggard and tired face. In the wind that blew in, there was a bit of the smell of grass and dew. Moran laid like this for a while, letting his consciousness return. When he sat up, he felt a trickle pain in his shoulder. Strange, when did his clothes tear? There was some dried blood under it. He was stunned for a while. Didn't he go out to investigate last night? He only remembered that there was no reaction from Bulat and Gui, so it should be a fake. After that, it seemed like his, he could not remember clearly. He looked around and saw a thick nail protruding from the dark brown floor. Perhaps it was the nail that scratched him. Did he sleep so deeply that he did not feel anything at all? He put on his clothes and got up, looking at the bed. Chu Wanning was still lying on the bed. Although he was used to him being high up and enjoying the good position and he could only pick up the leftovers, such as the floor at the end of the bed, and make do with it for the night. But today, he was inexplicably angry about it. He glared at that person's side profile and gritted his teeth. Why is it always me sleeping on the floor and you sleeping on the bed? It's not wrong to respect your master, but isn't there also the saying of loving the young? Moran was very upset. When he thought of the nail protruding from the floor that scratched him for no reason, he became even more angry. It was still early and he did not want to suffer by lying on the floor any longer. So, he simply lay down on the bed and closed his eyes to sleep. The two of them, one facing to the left and the other to the right, would not touch each other on this wide bed. Once embraced in dreams, now they sleep with boundaries. In his previous life, they laid down skin to skin, limbs overlapping. In the craziest days, he was even unwilling to withdraw after making love with Chu Wanning the night before. And these two people who had been so intimate then, 
were now asleep on opposite sides of the large bed. End chapter. Dumb Husky and his White Cat Shizun. Chapter 89. This venerable one's past affair with you. When Mo Ran woke up again, the sun was already high in the sky. Mo Ran turned over and blinked. He saw that Chu Wanning was still sleeping. Perhaps it was because he had drunk the taper scented dew or perhaps it was because his body hadn't been feeling well recently, so he had been having restless dreams. It was already so late, but he was still dreaming deeply. His back was facing Mo Ran and his long black hair was scattered, flowing between the pillows, creating a beautiful sight. Mo Ran. Since the Shizun didn't want to get out of bed yet, there was no need for the disciple to work hard. The bed was very comfortable and it was better to lie on it. However, it was boring to just lie down, so Mo Ran went over to play with Chu Wanning's hair. There was always a faint floral fragrance in Shizun's hair. It was soft like smoke and dense like mist. It was one of Mo Ran's favorite things to touch. His fingers passed through the thin stream of mist and the silk-like texture wrapped around his fingers. The ink-colored bed curtain swayed slightly with the wind that came in through the window. He narrowed his eyes. He was always full of energy when he woke up in the morning. Besides, the feeling of this texture on his fingertips was so good, so familiar, so. He lifted a strand of Chu Wanning's long hair and sniffed it carefully. This warm and soft long hair slowly brought back the past from his previous life. Although after his rebirth, he tried his best not to think about the overly romantic affairs he had with Chu Wanning in the past, but for some reason, he missed them this morning. He also felt his throat go dry. He didn't want to touch the body of the person in front of him again, but he could always touch his hair. He closed his eyes and gently kissed the black hair between his fingers. This black color. At Wushan Palace in Shi's Hung Peak, it was the same black color that hung down like thousands of threads, enveloping Mo Ran in it. He held the man's thin waist and under his fingertips was a thin layer of muscle, which was completely different from a woman's. Chu Wanning sat between his waist and legs. He must be in a lot of pain. He kept knitting his sharp eyebrows. His phoenix eyes were filled with bits of moist. It seemed as if he hates doing this, so unwilling but was also helpless and pitiful. Mo Ran, in the position of the victor, commands him with no grace nor tact. Move faster. Why are you so slow? Are you out of strength? Even so, Chu Wanning was still unyielding. He slightly gasped for breath, his eyes filled with hatred, moist and red-rimmed. Then, he bit his lips and began to violently move, almost as if he was harming himself. It was probably too painful. He repeated the act. His arched back gradually spasmed and his body was drenched in cold sweat. He did not beg for mercy, nor did he make a sound. Long black hair cascaded in front of him. Mo Ran's eyes were blazing in the night. Bestial lust, madness, joy and comfort intertwined in his eyes. Ugh. Suddenly, there was a muffled groan. The man on top of him seemed to be in so much pain that he could not bear it. Mo Ran's eyes darkened. He suddenly sat up and hugged that sweaty body. That person was trembling slightly. He tried so hard to endure, but he still could not help but tremble. But when Mo Ran sat up, he only sank deeper into him. His stomach felt like it was about to be pierced. The perpetrator of the violence, who caressed him tenderly, was extremely vicious. Chu Wanning, have you ever thought that one day, you would be done by me like this? He locked the person in his arms and slowly thrusted. Their ears and hair rubbed together. It was so intimate that he could not help but shudder. Yu Heng. Of the night sky, by the immortal. Ah, it's still not the same. You have to open your legs and let me fuck you. His hands roamed around the other's waist as he pushed up against him. Feeling how tightly he was sheathed inside Chu Wanning, he was so excited that sparks flew in all directions in his chest, but he couldn't help but pretend to be calm, 
humiliating him in every possible way. Didn't you say that I'm despicable? Didn't you look down on me? But Chu Wanning, you're the one who's pleasing me now. He bit the other person's chin maliciously. Lower your head and look at how you're sucking me in. Hmm. Between the two of us, who is more despicable, my good Shizun? Chu Wanning trembled and closed his eyes. He was unwilling to listen to such filthy words. This, was his first time, it was with the person he used to like, but it was like torture. It was better to die. Open your eyes. Mo Ran's cold command rang in his ears. If you keep closing your eyes, you know what I'll do. Shui Meng is still in my hands. There was nothing Chu Wanning could do. In the end, he slowly opened his watery eyes. He was pinched and forced to lower his head to look at his disciples' manhood breaching inside him. Their bodies collided with each other, bringing out sticky blood and viscous fluids. It was extremely obscene. Get up. His legs went soft. His last bit of dignity made him unwilling to rely on Moran's support to slowly get up. More than half of Moran's cock were pulled out. There was only a little bit of it left pressed against his hole. Moran held his cock and lightly poked in a few times. He didn't go too deep and only let Chu Wanning watch him being done. Chu Wanning's eyelashes kept trembling. He didn't know if it was because of pain, humiliation, or stimulation. You're such a slut, Moran said softly. If I knew, I would have done you when I was your disciple. Moran was a ruffian after all. He didn't know how to say things in an elegant way. Such crude words were like knives stabbing into Chu Wanning's heart. He suddenly raised his head and closed his eyes. His hoarse voice was heard for the first time as he said, Mo Ran, just kill me. The hand of the man that was holding his waist trembled imperceptibly. Then Mo Ran smiled. His smile was still sweet and cute. His deep dimples were showing. Right. Chu Wanning suddenly opened his eyes. Mo Ran saw his own twisted smile in those moist eyes that made him burn with lust. If you want to die, I won't stop you. But the way you die is not up to you. I want you to be ridden and fucked by thousands of people in front of your good disciple, Shui Meng. Oh, it's best if Shui Meng is also involved. What do you think of that? You. These harsh words were like poisonous needles stabbing into the man's weak spot. This scorpion called Mo Ran bared his fangs and brandished his claws, admiring his results. He saw Chu Wanning's face instantly turned pale. Although he tried his best to restrain himself, his slightly open lips still trembled slightly. Mo Ran suddenly felt satisfied seeing this pitiful reaction. Feeling happy and excited, he once again embraced Chu Wanning and buried himself deep into his body. He began to thrust rapidly and secretly rejoicing, almost crazily, Heh, why are you so stupid? You took it seriously. He laughed lowly, and then kissed him hard. He rubbed him and panted. Don't think too much. I was lying to you. Chu Wanning's body was pliant in his arms and his spirit seemed to have long been turned to dust. I didn't mean that. Mo Ran panted heavily. He felt that he was not satisfied, so he pushed him to the ground and pressed on top of him. He raised his leg and entered Chu Wanning's body again, thrusting quickly and forcefully. How can I bear to part with you? nor share you, you can only be mine, you can only be mine. Chu Wanning's slender and cold fingers tried to grab onto something but he could not hold onto anything. Chu Wanning was helpless in the end and was completely on Mo Ran's mercy. He was fucked until he was mind went blank and the light in his eyes gradually dimmed. Suddenly, he raised his hand and covered his eyes. Chu Wanning softly said, Mo Ran. Mo Ran if you still have a little bit of affection, a little bit of conscience. His eyelashes slightly trembled under the back of his hand. Please, don't do this again. Mo Ran. His voice suddenly choked up. That was the first time Mo Ran had heard Chu Wanning cried in his previous life. Mo Ran, I can't take it anymore. 
It hurts. Suddenly, Chu Wanning turned over, startling Mo ran out of his bittersweet memories. The past scattered, leaving only his heart thumping. The long hair between his fingers had slipped away, but that person was still sleeping on his side. His face was very close and Mo Ran could even see those long eyelashes clearly. So beautiful, he thought. To be honest, Chu Wanning did not have any kind of feminine appearance. His features were handsome and he had a strong aura. In fact, he was more masculine than most men. But the more he was like this, the more it made his heart itch. Mo Ran really wanted to see this iron-boned, insufferably arrogant man groveling under his body and being overwhelmed by ecstasy. His heart beat faster and faster. He stared at Chu Wanning's face, and his gaze moved inch by inch, landing on the light-colored lips that were slightly open as he breathed in his sleep. He could not help but get closer. Just a little closer, and he could kiss him. He could almost taste that sweet dew. Mo Rance Adam's apple moved as he felt an endless thirst. A little closer, a little closer, they were about to touch. Suddenly, a trace of clarity flashed through his burning mind. He suddenly froze, and his face became pale. What was he doing? Suddenly sitting up, Mo Ran stared at the man on the bed Chu Wanning, Chu Wanning. No matter how he used to be with him, it was all in the past. What was he doing? Was he crazy? Could it be that he really liked him? Suddenly shocked by this thought, Mo Ran's face turned pale as he felt daze. In the end, he took a deep breath, buried his face in his palms and fiercely rubbed it. He cursed under his breath, and ran away like he was escaping. End chapter Dumb Husky and his White Cat She's Un Chapter 90 This venerable one's idiom explanation is just fine. When Chu Wanning finally woke up, it was already noon. The taper-scented dew was really a good thing. He had a good night's sleep last night without any nightmares disturbing him. He yawned and slowly sat up. Mo Ran. Chu Wanning was slightly surprised that his disciple, who always liked to laze around in bed more than him, was not in the spot where he slept last night. There was no response. He got up, tidied up his clothes, and tied up his long misty hair while walking to the side room. A thin layer of water vapor rose from behind the Sujo embroidered screen that depicted a mountain range. It seemed that someone was taking a bath behind it. Mo Ran. Chu Wanning stood before the screen and called again. There was still no response. He couldn't help but feel suspicious. Chu Wanning knocked on the wooden edge of the screen several times, but there was still no response. He frowned and went behind the screen. This was a place in the room specially used for bathing and washing. There was a big camphorwood bathtub in the middle. Chu Wanning glanced at it. The water inside was hot and full. It was sprinkled with herbs and flowers that had already been arranged by the inn, but there was no one taking a bath. Chu Wanning looked around. Mo Ran's clothes were folded on the wooden rack. He couldn't have taken a bath and ran out without wearing clothes, right? Chu Wanning's forehead twitched. He suppressed this terrible thought and pursed his thin lips. His expression was somewhat unpleasant. Just as he was about to turn around and leave, he suddenly heard two bubbling sounds behind him. Chu Wanning turned around and saw that in the large wooden tub covered with flower petals and herbs, there were several bubbles rising. Is there someone inside? As soon as he thought of this, he heard a splash sound. A naked young man jumped out of the tub like a dragon out of the water. Chu Wanning was so shocked that he took two steps back. The young man seemed to be holding his breath under the water, so he didn't hear Chu Wanning calling him earlier. He couldn't hold his breath anymore and stood up, exposing half of his body. He shook off the water droplets in his hair like a dog. The water splashed all over Chu Wanning's clothes. Mo Ran. Ah. The person who was shaking his head was stunned for a moment before his eyes suddenly widened. It was obvious that he hadn't expected to see him as soon as he came out. 
he was extremely shocked. She's on. You. Chu Wanning's gaze swept across the young man's well-proportioned figure. His gradually growing shoulders and back were already very broad. His lines were smooth and tight, full of youthful tension. The water droplets gathered into a stream along his firm chest muscles and slowly flowed down. Under the sunlight, they were dazzling. He looked like one of those extremely beautiful merfolk, half floating on the water. His hair and eyes were wet and there were even a few petals in his hair. Moran wiped the water droplets off his face and smiled as he swam towards Chu Wanning. His hands were folded over the side of the bathtub, his shoulders were stretched like a leopard's as he looked up at him. For a moment, Chu Wanning felt dizzy and his face was burning. He subconsciously asked, What are you doing? Taking a bath. In the morning. Ee hee hee. Moran felt a little guilty. In fact, in the beginning, he wanted to take a cold bath to suppress that evil fire inside him. Later on, he suppressed the fire, but he also felt that since he had already taken off his clothes, he might as well take a good bath. After a while, he felt happy and dived into the water to practice the breath-holding technique. Unexpectedly, Chu Wanning bumped into him. What are you giggling about? Chu Wanning frowned. His tone gradually turned cold in an attempt to hide his hot-headedness. You woke up early and didn't even know to wake me up. You're messing around here. Are you? She's on. You, there's water here. He raised his hand and wiped the side of Chu Wanning's face. Mo Ran smiled. He forgot that his hand was wet to begin with. Wiping Chu Wanning's face would only make it wetter. Chu Wanning froze in place, the air surrounding him turned cold. His face was tense and his lips were slightly pursed. Only his eyelashes fluttered occasionally. It felt like he was training a hunting dog, but the crafty dog raised its head and nudged him to pet him. Put on your clothes and get out. We're preparing to return to the sect. In the end, Chu Wanning threw down these words with a cold face and left with a flick of his sleeves. From where Mo Ran were, he couldn't see that the tips of his ears turned red. Just like how Chu Wanning couldn't see that there was a pair of moist, complicated and still longing stare that couldn't help but be fixed on him until he disappeared around the corner. The cute smile on Mo Ran's face disappeared and was replaced by a kind of resentment. He angrily slapped the water and rubbed his face. Damn it! What was going on today? When he saw him, he only raised his hand to touch his face. However, that was enough for the desire that he had suppressed with great difficulty to flare up again as he actually felt himself got hard again. Why did it took you too long to wear your clothes? By the window, Chu Wanning turned his face. His clothes were fluttering, and fine strands of hair blew across his jade cheeks. He was slightly impatient as he reprimanded him. Mo Ran coughed a few times and said vaguely, I used a spell to dry my hair. I, I didn't use it well. It was a bit slow. She's on, please don't nag me. It was rare to see him speak so politely. Chu Wanning looked at him with some surprise and said, Since you're done washing up, go pack your things. We'll rent an enchanted boat to travel back. I don't want to ride a sword. I'm tired of riding a horse. It's better to go by water. Oh, all right. Mo Ran didn't dare to look at him and coughed a few more times to cover it up. Chu Wanning frowned and said, What's wrong with your throat? Nothing. He turned around to pack his things. The two bought some dry food and snacks in the shop, then went to the pier to rent a boat and set off. The boat traveled along the Yangtze River. When it reached a place where it was impassable, it set up a pair of wooden wings and flew high into the sky with enchantments. Although it wasn't traveling fast, it was comfortable and private. Eight days later, the two reached Chi's Hung Peak. The wooden boat stopped in front of the mountain gate. Mo Ran lifted the bamboo curtain and let Chu Wanning come out of the cabin first, then followed behind him. At this time, the moon was high in the sky as it was late at night. 
Elder Yu Hang had asked Xue Zhenyang not to send anyone to welcome them, so the two walked up the stairs by themselves. When they reached the entrance of the main gate, they met the four disciples guarding the gate who greeted them accordingly. Elder Yu Hang Young Master Mo When the four disciples saw them, for some reason, a trace of panic flashed across their faces. Before the two could react, they knelt down and looked up to report anxiously, Elder, young master, some people came to Shi's Hung Peak seeking revenge on the two of you. The sect leader sent a messenger pigeon to tell you to temporarily hide and avoid them. It seems the messenger pigeon flew too slow and missed you. Elder, young master, please go and hide in Vucham town. Don't go in. Chu Wanning narrowed his eyes and asked, why are you so panicked? It's people from the upper cultivation world. They said that Elder Yu Heng is practicing demonic cultivation, so they want to take you to Tianyin Pavilion for interrogation. Tianyin Pavilion. Mo Ran said in surprise, isn't that where the ten great sects bring and interrogate heinous criminals? Yes. They're here because of the incident in Kaidi Town. One of the female disciples said in panic, Elder, do you remember? It's that time when you have beaten a civilian. At most, it was just an abuse of the cultivation technique and implicating civilians. Shizun has already been punished, so why are they suddenly bringing up this old account and even involving Tianyin Pavilion? Mo Ran frowned as he continued. Also, what's this got to do with demonic cultivation? We don't know the details, but according to the people who came, the people of Kaidi Town were all killed in one night. The one who killed them was a half-immortal, half-ghost entity and it seemed to have been ordered by someone. That ghost's powers were profound, so ordinary cultivators can't possibly control her. So those people in the upper cultivation world suspect, suspect that this was done by Elder Yu Heng. Chu Wanning Mo Ran laughed. I thought it was something serious. This kind of misunderstanding, it's better to clear it up, why do we need to hide? He then turned to Chu Wanning and said with a smile, Shizun, look at how their little minds work. When you get rid of small fries, they'll say you're competing with your juniors for prestige. When you get rid of major demons, they'll suspect that you're practicing demonic cultivation and raising a ghost cultivator to harm others. Then we might as well not do anything just like them. Let us just stay at home and focus on improving our own cultivation. Chu Wanning didn't laugh, his face had an unpleasant expression. After a moment of silence, he asked, Are all the townspeople of Kaidi Town dead? It said so, no one is alive. Chu Wanning closed his eyes. The female disciple saw that his expression was strange and said uneasily, Elder. This wasn't my doing but it might be because I didn't get rid of the demon completely. I have a responsibility, so how can I avoid it? Chu Wanning slowly opened his eyes. Mo Ran, follow me inside. In Loyalty Hall, twelve bronze lanterns were lined up on both sides. Each lantern was ten feet tall and nine layers of bronze branches stretched out. From top to bottom, from short to long, there were a total of 356 candles, brightly illuminating the hall of Shi's Hung Peak as if it was daytime. Xue Zhenyang stood solemnly in his martial attire. His leopard-like eyes were like rings, staring at the people below like an iron statue. Manner masterly, I'll tell you one last time. Elder Yu Heng is not in the sect right now and I can guarantee with my head on the line that the incident at Kaidi Town was not done by him deliberately. Don't make irresponsible remarks, that. Madam Wang who was beside him, pulled at sleeves and reminded him softly, Huang. Cough, don't make irresponsible remarks about that. Xue Zhenyang waved his hand and said sternly. Madam Wang became quiet. In addition to the disciples on duty at Shi's Hung Peak, there were more than 30 people standing in the hall. Almost all of them were wearing jade green brocade robes, with horsetail whisks in their arms and heavenly silkworm crowns on their heads. They were the disciples of the Baitan Manor, a new rising sect in the upper cultivation world. 
The sect leader is a man of about 50 years old. His mustache was like a catfish, fluttering in the wind. The master of Baitan Manor who is named Li Wuxin. Li Wuxin twirled his long mustache and said with a cold smile, Sect leader Shui, I respect your sect as a member of the righteous path, so I'm reasoning with you. After Elder Yu Heng and his disciples exorcised the demon in Kaidi town, this shocking incident happened. Other than the three of them, Master Chen's family didn't have any contact with any other cultivators. The witnesses and material evidence are all here. You have to admit to that whether you want to or not. Shui Meng, who was standing beside his father, couldn't help but curse, you still have the fucking face to say that. When have you ever cared about the lower cultivation world? Normally, you're just a bystander concerned only with your own cultivation, but when something happens, you blame it on my Shizun. What kind of logic is this? Young Master Shui. Li Wuxin didn't get angry. Instead, he looked at Shui Zhenyang meaningfully and said with a smile, I've heard of young Master Shui's virtuous reputation and how people call you a young phoenix. Now that I've met you and see how much self-restraint you have, haha. It really opened my eyes. You. Li Wuxin leisurely turned to look at Shui Zhenyang. Sect Master Shui, the upper cultivation world has strict laws. Once we interfere, we'll investigate thoroughly. If you insist on not handing over Yu Heng, Mo Ran, and the others, I'll have no choice but to ask the Rafeng sect, the number one sect in the world, to come and uphold justice. Shui Zhenyang had a fiery temper, so when he heard what Li Wuxin said, he felt rather disdainful. Oh, I know your Baitan Manor has good relations with the Rufeng sect, but even if Nangong Lu himself stood in front of me today, I'd still say the same thing this matter has nothing to do with Yu Heng. Shui Meng also said, Manor Master Li, please go back. I will see you out. Did you see that? Did you see that? They're just so unreasonable, hiding and tolerating evil. A man's trembling voice suddenly erupted from the crowd. At that time, that person surnamed Mo stole my friend's things. We politely came up the mountain to ask for an explanation, but they also coaxed us to leave in such a rude manner. Manner masterly, did you see that? If we allow people from Shi's Hung Peak to continue committing crimes, the lower cultivation world will be finished. As soon as he finished speaking, he heard a soft laugh coming from the entrance hall. Everyone turned their heads and saw a blue-clothed and lightly armored youth leaning against the vermilion lacquered door in the darkness. He was lazily looking at the scene inside the hall. The youth was extremely handsome. His skin was tight and delicate under the candlelight, as if it glowed. Young Master Chang, when did I steal your friend's things? The youth smiled gently and cutely. Tell me about that wrong San Er. No, maybe it's wrong Ju, I can't remember clearly. In short, is that wonderful creature your friend, or is he your mistress? If you're not honest, I'm afraid he'll be sad. The one crying and complaining was none other than the wealthy merchant from Yizhu, Changda, who had promised before that he wouldn't let go of Shi's Hung Peak. Young Master Chang suddenly turned his head and saw that Mo Ran had appeared. His expression changed at first, then his eyes flashed and he howled miserably. Mo Weiyu, you bastard, Ju Er and I are close friends, there is nothing between us. Now that he has been poisoned by you demons and died a horrible death, you, you actually dare to slander others and frame him. What? Mo Ran was stunned and his eyes widened slightly. Wrong Ju is dead. Young Master Chang was angry and his eyes were filled with tears. His parents were also from the Kaidi town. A few days ago, they went back to their hometown to visit their relatives and met with this accident. If he didn't go, how would I know about the evil things you and your master did? I wouldn't have gone to ask Manor Masterly for justice. However, Mo Ran didn't have a good impression of Rongju. After being surprised, he waved his hand impatiently. What friendship is between a pestle and a mortar? Are you the pestle and he is the mortar? 
Using a pestle to break a mortar, how are you innocent? Mo ran. Young Master Chang didn't expect him to speak like this. He was shocked and angry. You, you are an illiterate hooligan. You, you. Cough. Madame Wang was totally embarrassed. Xue Zhenyang blinked his eyes and didn't say anything. Pestle and mortar were not good words, but he felt that his nephew's words were reasonable and there was nothing wrong with them. Suddenly, a sigh sounded in the night. The sound was like the shattering of the Kun Mountain and the melting of the ice lake. It was indescribably deep and pleasant to the ears. Then, a hand with long bones and beautiful lines appeared, it slapped Mo Ran's face unceremoniously. What filthy words, a friendship of a pestle and mortar is a friendship between Gong Shamu and Wu Yu. Chu Wanning appeared at the door with a gloomy face. He said angrily, you only know how to embarrass me. Why are you still standing at the door? Get in. She's on. She's on. Xue Meng and Shi Mei called out as soon as they saw him. They were both surprised and happy and came to greet him. Xue Zhenyang opened his eyes wide. He was angry and helpless. Yu Heng, why did you suddenly come back? If I didn't come back, how long did you plan to hold on by yourself? Chu Wanning strode into the loyalty hall. His handsome face was illuminated by the candle light, making him look as elegant as a celestial being. He stood in front of the golden seat in the hall and nodded to Xue Zhenyang. He then turned around and waved his wide sleeves. Facing Li Wuxin's shocked eyes, Chu Wanning glanced over and said lightly, She's Hung Peaks Chu Wanning, residing in Elder Yu Heng's seat. I heard that you have something to ask and it would be impolite to refuse. Please enlighten me. End chapter.